Hey YouTube, I'm back. Uh, I did get a quick video out last week. Uh, sorry for the absenteeism. I uh, got some health issues with the family, which, uh, well, they're still an ongoing thing. But um, today we're going to be going over the uh, remake of my uh, CO2 setup. Um, this is a video that will be helpful to first-time people uh, getting into pressurized CO2 and uh, for those of you who have followed me and know what my setup is well we're gonna remake it and make it better so a um, little background on it real quick um, my setup consists of a uh, 20 pound uh, CO2 tank, which uh, I was lucky enough to acquire from uh, one of my uh, customers uh, who has a uh, restaurant and he had uh, one of his extra, an extra beverage CO2 tank laying around. So I was able to get that free, which is always great. Got an Aquatech regulator uh, preset at about 35 PSI and a three-way splitter which splits it off to the three tanks the 55 40 and 20. Um, the way i initially had it set up for those of you who have not followed me was that uh, i have my tanks in a 90 degree angle format they sit on a corner and uh, on one wall i have the 55 and on the other wall uh, i have the uh, 40 and 20 and in the corner in between them is where the tank used to sit um, which was fine it was out of the way and uh, it, it worked out fine for the last year or so but uh, the problem was that uh, to do the adjustments for the bubble counters and when you had to replace the tank um, it was you had to kind of reach around and over it was very awkward so I decided uh, that it was time to upgrade this and make the tank a lot easier and more accessible and uh, along with that I wanted to uh, also neaten up where the bubble counters and the uh, splitter with the adjustments on it are so that they were more easily accessed and more easily read. So that's where we're at at this point and I think we should just Get to it. Okay, YouTube. So here we go. This is my 20 gallon cylinder. Not necessary for a home use. Uh, as I said, I run it on the uh, 40 gallon, the 55, and the 20 gallon down below. And uh, it lasts me about six months. So it's a twice a year kind of thing. And it's getting expensive. This, uh, this tank here was uh, $48 for the refill for the swap out started out at thirty dollars so it's getting more and more expensive I need to look for options on that but that's not here nor there and it will vary from city to city I've heard people talking about it being as cheap as ten dollars for for the same size tank so you know it just depends on where you're at I guess I can't imagine that co2 would be going up in price being that that's one of the things that we're trying to get rid of in the atmosphere so <laughs> go figure so at any rate, over to the regulator. The regulator will attach to the tank, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, right now, what I want to show you is the original setup here that I had was that the regulator attaches to the tank back here. So you open the tank pressure up, it comes into the regulator. Uh, up here is your primary pressure, which is the tank pressure, and that usually runs up around, oh, a thousand to, you know, twelve hundred, somewhere in there. Uh, you don't want to see that number too high, otherwise the tank could explode. Um, but usually runs around a thousand PSI. 
Um, it works its magic through the regulator here. Uh, this is a preset regulator from uh, Aquatech. You can get them where you see them with a knob here. And that will adjust your secondary, which is this gauge right here. Um, this one is preset at, I think, 40 PSI. It usually runs between 35 and 40. Uh, it's not an exacting science because it is a, you know, it's a spring that actually is the actuator. Um, but it, yeah, usually secondary is usually between 35 and 40, somewhere in there, PSI output. Okay, so your secondary comes out here. And this right here is the electronic solenoid that turns the uh, pressure on and off. And this is what you would plug up to a uh, timer so that it works out that when the right before the lights come on it turns on and starts to uh, flow the CO2 into the tank and uh, right as the lights turn off or approximately thereabouts it turns off usually a little bit before they turn the lights turn off you want to turn your CO2 off and the way it was running was this was all attached to the tank and then it had this splitter on top of it okay and from each one of these ports was a hose to go to one of the tanks so you had like the 55 the 40 and the 20 gallon and each one of these knobs here is a fine adjustment so you would take your thousand PSI from the tank into the regulator which would regulate it down to 35 to 40 PSI that would come out through here the solenoid would turn on and the CO2 would come up here and then with these three knobs you could regulate it down to so many drops per second okay which uh, is done in the little drop checker which we'll look at here soon so this whole rig that I had that was all inclusive used to sit sitting back here in this corner which uh, was fine but uh, unfortunately you know every time I had to change out or put the new tanks in uh, it wasn't exactly the easiest uh, place to get to and uh, the corner right here and the corner right down here are awful close together so you had to kind of twist it and everything and those tanks aren't exactly light especially when they're full so you know all in all it was kind of a pain in the butt to get out from that corner area so I decided to upgrade my setup and uh, I've been using this setup for quite a, quite some time now and I want to uh, to kind of uh, consolidate some of this stuff now um, as I said I was going to talk about the bubble counters here's one of them right here that's the one that goes to the 40 gallon there's one down there which is for the 20 gallon and there's one right over here which goes to the 55 gallon so that we're going to talk about here shortly I want to try to get them all in one spot so that I can look at them side by side and know exactly how many bubbles I'm getting per tank so back over here so here was my plan I wanted to split this off from the regulator and move the tank and regulator to an area where I could easily access it yet I could run this back over to the corner over there where all my tubing was without having to buy a bunch of new CO2 tubing which isn't exactly cheap so this is what I came up with um, which wasn't easy by the way I had to go to a couple of different places. Uh, welding supply did not have what I need. Um, I ended up at a hydraulic place actually that did have the fittings to make this work. So what I replaced was this, I got this elbow fitting which the thread into this and the thread into this hose end are two different kinds of thread. So they were able to match me up here and there was another fitting on here before but I'm not going to go into that at this point because it doesn't matter. So I was able to thread this into this and get this nice hose, which is eight feet long. And then at the end, 
was able to piece this together here's the hose end and then this little adjustment here which goes hose end connection to the connection that goes up into this brass fitting and voila I have my outlets so where's the tank gonna go so what we're gonna do I'll grab the tank real quick and it's gonna come over here and live on the side of my 55 gallon mm. um, there's also another project coming up soon where I'm going to be building that an enclosure and uh, encapsulating the top part of the enclosure with two uh, peristolic pumps and uh, there will be some tanks down here fluid tanks on either side I believe at this point that's my that's my think pro thought process at this point there'll be two thin fluid tanks on either side which will contain the fertilizers the NPK and the uh, the macros <coughs> micros and macros and they will be drawn up by the peristolic pumps which will be dosed into at least the 55 gallon which is the main show tank so I will have kind of my all my all-in-one uh, uh, plant support system right here on the end of the tank which is accessible and here's the doorway leading, leading out of this room so tank gets empty all I gotta do is pull it out disconnect the uh, regulator from it take it up swap it out uh, the two tanks uh, and this may change this is this is down the road this is gonna be a project probably in late spring summertime somewhere in there um, we'll have the the two fluid tanks which will come up and there will be uh, above this tank right here or I may make it a flip out where it kind of covers the top part of this tank and you can flip it up to remove that tank and then flip it back down but the two peristolic pumps will be in the top part right there but hey that's coming that's another project and it's not finalized yet so but you'll see that soon. So at any rate, relocating the tank here. Um, I could take you through how to uh, attach the regulator to the uh, <laughs> to the tank, but I think there's about a million and one videos uh, about that. Basically this just uh, screws on. Um, I don't think that that's so important and uh, once again the idea being that this hose will allow me to take this hose will run behind the tank and the splitter will end up back over here in the corner where I can connect up my three lines from my three tanks to inject my CO2 so this way and if I can really make it all work which would be wonderful is I could have it all on kind of like one board or maybe mount it over here on this leg for this uh, aquarium setup or whatever I could have my three bubble counters side by side and then right below them I can have the uh, I could have the uh, the uh, adjustments the uh, this guy right here where I can I can fine-tune how many bubbles per second I got going and then have the three lines feeding off into the aquariums. So that's what it's looking like and we will be back soon when I've got all this uh, connected up and uh, I'll show you uh, how I do some fine tuning on it.